Cooking dry beans is kind of like going to the gym. If you're only going to do it twice a year, you're likely to cause more harm than good. But dry beans are incredibly delicious and rewarding to cook, and today we're going to make a bean geek out of you. Dry beans need to be fresh. In supermarkets, they often sit too long because very few people cook dry beans these days. So if you've ever cooked a pot of beans where half the beans refuse to get tender after three hours, you were probably dealing with a batch of old beans. I buy my beans online from Rancho Gordo. They source a huge number of heirloom varieties, each with its own personality. Today we're cooking Maya Coba beans. Rancho Gordo beans are exceptionally fresh and cook evenly and beautifully. Info on how to order their beans is on my blog linked below this video. Store your beans in a cool, dark, dry place and use within a year. In case you're wondering, Rancho Gordo is not sponsoring this video. They don't even know I'm making it. And the procedure I'll describe works on any dry beans, of course. Most varieties need an overnight soak to produce evenly cooked beans. Unless you're dealing with lima beans, I suggest you soak them. I soak my beans in a 3% salt solution. This reduces the bursting of thin-skinned beans like cannellini. Some beans are not prone to bursting and don't need the salt in the soaking water, but it never hurts. Here is how it works. Imagine your beans are wearing jeans. That's their skins. During the cooking process, the beans will gain a lot of weight, kind of like after a Thanksgiving meal. But we don't want their jeans to burst. Adding salt to the soaking water is like adding spandex to the jeans. It allows the skins to grow with the beans instead of ripping. It's especially important if you have hard water. The minerals in it prevent some bean skins from stretching. But salt replaces those mineral ions in bean skins and helps them stretch. Here is how to make your soak for one pound of beans. Set a bowl on a scale, zero it out, and measure 1500 grams of water. Zero out the bowl with water and add 45 grams of kosher salt, and that's your 3% solution. Avoid table salt or sea salts. We don't want to introduce either iodine or any other minerals here. Because we're measuring salt by weight, the amount doesn't change from brand to brand. The solution will be scarily salty, but the beans won't be, because we'll cook them in fresh water and the concentration of salt will go down tremendously. Stir the water to dissolve the salt and pour in one pound of beans. Let them sit for at least eight hours at room temperature. Here they are the next day, all plump and big. Let's rinse them in a colander and check how well they hydrated. When you drop a handful of beans on a ceramic or metal surface, they should make a hollow sound like this. If any make a ding sound and still look small, they failed to absorb much water. For most bean varieties, these little beans can be left in. They will cook a lot slower, but the other beans will wait for them. But the white bean varieties, like cannellini, Great Northern, and Navy, tend to be impatient. Even if you've used salt, thin-skinned beans can only be cooked for so long without bursting. And there is nothing worse than having 10% of your beans undercooked and chalky. So for white beans, I suggest you pick through them and remove the ones that didn't get hydrated after the soak. Place your beans in a pressure cooker or a large pot and add 1500 grams water. This is fresh, unsalted water, not your soaking solution. Beans cook for a very long time, usually one to two hours, and they require attention because if they bubble too much, they fall apart. That's where a pressure cooker comes in. What damages beans is not the heat, but the turbulence. Under normal conditions, you get to 212 Fahrenheit and boom, you've got turbulence. But in a pressure cooker, the water gets up to 250 degrees before it boils. 
This reduces the cooking time and the amount of bouncing tremendously and you get perfect beans without a hassle in 15 to 20 minutes. Seal the pressure cooker. Set it to high pressure, 15 psi, and lock. Set over high heat and wait for the pressure indicator to come up. Reduce the heat to low and set the timer for the duration specified in a pressure cooker reference. Here are the times for most common beans and you can find more at hip pressure cooking blog. Timing for many Rancho Cordo varieties is on my blog. As always, it's all in the link below this video. For my Acoba beans, we'll go with 5 minutes on low. When the timer goes off, turn the burner off, but don't release pressure. On an electric stove, move the pot off the burner. Let the beans sit for 10 minutes. They're still cooking at high pressure during this time. Then release pressure using the knob. This is a modified version of natural release. With natural release, you wait for the pressure indicator to drop before opening, but I find that kind of release to produce different results based on how much stuff is in your pressure cooker. If you have a lot of stuff in your pot, it stays hot longer and results in more cooking. If you have just a little bit of stuff, it cools off quickly and the pressure drops. If I release pressure after exactly 10 minutes, I'll get the same amount of cooking regardless of how much stuff is in my pot. Unlock and open your pressure cooker and taste your beans. When you taste the beans, go for the smallest ones. The really puffy ones bursting at the seams are obviously done and don't need testing. When you blow on your bean, its skin will likely burst. That's normal. That's why you should never drain your beans until they cool off. Taste your bean and see how you like the texture. It should be completely creamy, without any hints of chalkiness. See, it should feel like mashed potatoes inside the skin. If your bean wasn't ready yet, continue to simmer gently, uncovered, without pressure. That's how you'd cook your beans without a pressure cooker. Cover, bring to a boil, then uncover and cook on the gentlest simmer. If the bean you tasted was perfect, taste a few more. When you get five perfect beans in a row, you are done. If the beans taste bland to you, season the liquid with salt. Cool your beans off and store in the fridge in their liquid for up to a week. If you want to store them for more than a week, first refrigerate them in liquid overnight. This helps the burst beans recongeal and the slightly less done ones continue hydrating. Then drain and place in a Ziploc bag in a single layer. This will make the frosting a lot faster. Freeze your beans and liquid separately. They'll keep this way for months. There are many ways to serve beans. Here is one of my favorites some caramelized onions, roasted tomatoes that are coarsely chopped, salt and pepper to taste. Heat it all up until hot and bubbly. Finish with a bit of pomegranate molasses or some other acidic ingredient and a pat of butter. Mm. Now these are some cool beans. So silky and comforting just perfect. For more thoroughly analyzed culinary topics, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.